Hi everybody, I'm Simon from Vizu, and I'm going to take you through a couple of our really cool upgrades for the Jaguar platform today. Now this is our Jaguar charge cooler upgrade and our Jaguar supercharger cooler pump upgrade. Now these aren't the first modifications that you're going to look for when you're upgrading your car. If you've got a standard vehicle and you're just looking at a performance tune, or even performance tune and an uprated supercharger top pulley, these aren't going to be the first items that you look for. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them, what they do, and when and where you would need them on the vehicle. Now of course, you're welcome to tick the box and add these to your car straight away with your tuning, with your normal remap and your top pulley upgrade, but it's not a necessity for the standard car or even just for normal sort of tuning and top pulley upgrades. And the reason for that is the standard cooling system on the car and the volume of coolant that it has in there is more than enough for a remap or a remap and a top pulley upgrade. So taking your typical five litre F-Type, as you can see behind here, or your Range Rover SVR, even your three litre V6, increasing the power on those standard vehicles with the V8s with the remap going up to around about 600 horsepower with a top pulley 610 to 620, depending on the model and platform, the standard cooling system is more than enough to cope with the cooling requirements of that engine. It's when we start to make upgrades to the engine and the supercharger to really unlock the full potential of that platform, whether it is the V6 or the V8, by putting the lower crank pulley upgrade on as well, we obviously run a lot more boost through the engine, up to six to seven PSI more than the remap and the upper pulley. When we do this, of course, with an increase in performance, with an increase of airflow through the supercharger, it's gonna generate more heat. Okay, there's more energy going through there, there's more air, more volume of air going through the supercharger. As it's being compressed through the supercharger itself, it is going to generate heat. Compressing air creates friction, friction creates heat. That's the point that we then look to our improved cooling. Now, the first thing we've got is our charge cooler here. It's a very similar look to the standard design, of course, from the car, because this is designed as a straightforward bolt-on fit. Everything comes pre-drilled, aligned to the standard car, so you can literally take to any garage and they can take your old standard charge cooler off and bolt the brand new uprated supercharger cooler on there. The difference with this, other than obviously looking a lot shinier and more, uh, more bright and uh, more aesthetically pleasing, is the fact that it's 30% bigger than the standard charge cooler. Now what we've actually done is very carefully optimise the charge cooler to make as much use of space inside the vehicle without having any detrimental effect on the airflow through the radiator behind or on any other components in that area of the vehicle. Now often people when they look at things like radiators, intercoolers, even charge coolers will look to make them bigger and larger, thicker, taller, wider in every possible direction. But that's not the optimum for this engine. And in many cases that can actually have a negative impact where you can have coolant flowing through a charge cooler but there's no airflow going over the front. If you were to make this taller, you're actually restricting the airflow and creating hot spots, inefficiencies in the charge cooler itself. So what we've done is we've actually optimised the flow of the charge cooler as well as actually making it 30% bigger, so that's deeper on there. What this means is we still maximise the airflow from the front of the vehicle over all the veins on the charge cooler but by having it optimised, a little bit more space in between some of those veins, we actually improve the airflow not only through the thicker, deeper charge cooler, but we improve the airflow to the radiator behind. So it's a win-win when it comes to upgrading your charge cooler. Now a lot of people will ask, well, upgrading my charge cooler, how much more horsepower am I going to get? 30 horsepower, 40 horsepower? Well, upgrading your charge cooler doesn't generate any additional power. Where the improvements come from is by the improved cooling. By maintaining those optimum operating temperatures, i.e. not letting the engine get too hot, where the ECU then gets into a thermal management strategy and starts to pull the power back through reducing timing, closing the throttle and overfueling to manage temperatures, you can have the maximum safe potential from your engine for much longer. Now let's look at an example of a, a track day vehicle. If you have the standard charge cooler on your car and you put the top pulley and the lower crank pulley upgrades on an Arima, the car's perfectly safe and the ECU will look after its thermal management to make sure it stays in its optimum operating conditions throughout all of your track day session, whether it's lap 1 or lap 20. What you'll notice though by lap 20, providing your driving's consistent of course, is your lap times will probably get a little bit slower as the ECU starts to recognise operating temperatures are getting a little bit warmer, it's having to reduce the timing and reduce the power slightly so each lap you get a little bit slower because the temperatures are increasing and increasing. And of course the hotter the temperature, the worse the combustion is to a degree when it, we look at the air quantity in the engine. 
So the hotter the air is, the less combustible oxygen it's got inside, the hotter it is, the thinner it is, and we start to have a negative impact on the combustion. If we get those temperatures too hot inside the chamber, beyond the optimum point, we can even start to cause pre-detonation issues in the engine. So the ECU manages all of that to keep you nice and safe, but you want to get the best out of your car, don't you? If you're in a hot climate, take it to a track day, or just like to drive enthusiastically, when you've got a crank pulley upgrade on your car, you need to look at a charge caller as well. So by fitting the charge caller, the best example we can give of this is, if you look at the lap times we said from a track day, lap one will now be very similar to lap five and lap 10 in terms of times because you're cooling the engine better and more efficiently. We see this on the dyno. So tangible numbers measured in control conditions takes out the variables of the track day and you're not braking at the same point for every corner. On the dyno, after three runs on a standard vehicle, the temperature gets to a certain point for intake air temps, charge air temperatures, engine coolant temps, and of course, exhaust gas temps, where the ECU starts to then manage those temperatures way before it gets to a point that's too hot for the engine. It then reduces the power. If we do 10 dyno runs, the power will be much lower than it will be on the first two or three runs. With the charge call on there, we can do seven, eight, nine, ten runs back to back on the vehicle before the thermal management of the ECU strategy starts to interfere with the power output and starts to reduce those optimum numbers. Take this to the real world and what does it mean for you? Fitting the charge cooler, this uprated 30% bigger charge cooler, designed with the factory fit straight onto the standard vehicle, as you can see, pre-cut holes here, you are going to get more power from your vehicle for longer, not by adding more power, but by mitigating that thermal management from the ECU that would ordinarily reduce the power on the vehicle. Basically what it means is you can enjoy the power you've got for much, much longer, for a longer drive, more time on the track, whatever you're using the car for, before it starts to reduce that power slightly as it maintains all its thermal tolerances. So you've uprated your charge cooler. That's well, great, 30% bigger charge cooler, more volume of coolant in there. How can we optimize this further? Well. That's why a supercharger cooler pump comes into play. 40% higher flow rate. Now on a standard vehicle again, even with just the top pulling a remap, the uprated supercharger cooler pump isn't a requirement. By running out on the standard vehicle, you're actually gonna increase your pressures through the system slightly. Now whilst there is a small thermal benefit from running a higher pressure in a coolant system, it actually improves the cooling dynamics and the, the threshold of that coolant for temperature, it's not a requirement for the standard vehicle. You're putting more pressure through some of those parts and connectors, combine it with the charge cooler, the operated charge cooler instead. The two of these working together maintains the optimum. You've got better cooling, now you want to get that nice, much colder coolant through to the supercharger and around the engine much faster and more efficiently. Supercharger cooler pump with 40% increased flow, maximizes the improvements from your supercharger cooler by getting that nice cold coolant around the engine, extracting the heat from that big power plant where it's the V6 or the V8, and bringing it back through the radiator and into the charge cooler to repeat the process again. Using both of them together optimizes your engine for the maximum cooling efficiency, which ultimately means you can have the maximum power from your engine safely for as long as you want. Both of these parts are available mail order, and if you're a hobby enthusiast, DIY mechanic, you can fit them yourselves, or you can take them to any professional garage to have them installed. They're really easy to fit, and as I said, they're designed as a direct bolt-on replacement, both the supercharger cooler pump and the supercharger cooler here. The charge cooler, pre-drilled, ready to fit straight onto your vehicle. Whether that's an F-Type, XJ, doesn't matter the model, it fits straight on. So contact one of our team today, either on email, info at vizu.com, or call us on 01789 774444 and speak to one of our team about how we can improve your cooling and efficiency on your vehicle to give you as much power as you can for as long as you want it.